Okay, here we go. Here she goes again. That'd be me. Hi. Okay, so we were going to do a house tour today. And I was going to take you around and show you all my art and my studio that I do my yoga and my ballet in. And now that my daughter's moved out and I put a stripper pole in it, <laughs> my strip club. I just bought a DVD off of Amazon and I'm going to learn how to do pole dancing. For who? I have no idea. But if you're the lucky guy. Um, yeah, so I was really going to do this upbeat, real happy. I better set the timer because the, these millennials, you can't really trust them about whether they're going to show up or not. And this editing stuff is really for the birds. I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to put it on 10 minutes so that I don't go over the time like I did yesterday. And I sweated profusely trying to figure out, okay, how do I cut this out? I got to cut this out. Da, 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 da. And I wish I knew all those little fun little, little fun little sounds that you can make and all that. But I don't, I don't know how to do any of that. So this is just straight you, me and the camera nothing else and a timer and I've got nine minutes and 29 seconds left anyway so I'm on the phone with my best girlfriend the one ironically who when she turned 60 I said so what's 60 like and she said to me you think about your mortality your morta mortality so I'm listening to her okay the Beatles can you see the Beatles John Paul Ringo Keith Keith, what am I talking about the moon? I mean, the who? Anyway, um, so I'm talking to them, and and he's preaching, and I love him to death. My God, he's one of my favorite human beings on the planet. But he starts telling me something where I completely clash in in this in this in this um, conversation in this way of thinking. It's a complete clash in the way that I think. He starts talking, he starts telling me that he's so grateful for everything he's gone through because it's made him who he is, 100%. And I know my first video, I was talking about the fact that we've got to learn everything, it's just about everything that we've gone through so it can make us who we are and that's what we're here to learn and to grow so that we can become better human beings. But, but that's not the entire truth. That's not the entire, entire truth. Because sometimes there's shit that happens in life that you really don't need to go through because it's not going to really teach you anything. It's just going to fuck you up. Now, listen, I'm grateful that I know this and I'm grateful for even the 10% that I would love to give back and only be 80% of who I am instead of being 100%. I'm grateful, I guess. I'm supposed to say that. Aren't we all supposed to say I'm grateful for everything I went through to, because it made me who I am? Well, but I'm not. I'm not grateful for everything that I've gone through. There is truly between 5 and 10% of the shit that I've gone through in my life that I would gladly give you back so that I could have a happier, peaceful, less depressed, yes, I'm a person who is depressed. I have depression. I've had it my entire life, but I never really knew it until this year when I finally spoke out and spoke up and told somebody and said, yeah, I've been dealing with something that I've been hiding for a long time because I, my life seems so perfect and I don't want anybody to know that I'm depressed. Because people look and they go, yeah, you got this, you've got that, you look like that, you've got this, you're married to this person, you drive this, you do that. How can you be, how can you be depressed? Well, you can be. And I think part of it is because there are certain parts of our lives that we go through that we don't need to go through to get to be who we are. I think there's a correlation. I think there's, I think there's a, there's a connection there. Because if I did go through everything 100%, would I be as depressed? Because I sit back and I have to take medication because there are things that I can't think about on a daily basis or I'd want to kill myself. I mean, I'm not going to kill myself, but there are certain things, maybe that was a little dramatic, but there are certain things that if I dwell on, I'm not going to be the happiest person on the face of the earth or even on my block or even in my house. So giving up 10, 
5% of who I am to just to be 80% of who I am, I would gladly do that. That's what I subscribe to. I do not subscribe to, I'm glad I went through 100% of everything I went through to be exactly who I am today. I am happy with just 80% of who I am. The other 10, you can keep it. You can keep it because it's full of lies and it's bullshit and it's not helping me in any way, shape or form. The only thing that it does is it gives me compassion for other people who have been through crap, lies, things that, that people have said about them that have ruined their reputation like what happened to me. I can relate to you if that has happened to you, but I don't wanna feel that. Do you wanna feel that? Do you want me to have to say to you, I am so sorry that your reputation was ruined over something that wasn't true? No, you don't wanna to have to go through that, especially if it doesn't teach you anything. My situation that I went through with that didn't teach me anything except for lawyers are a bunch of bullshit artists and, and trying to get out of paying child support is like the worst thing that you can do to a woman. And thank God I've got a great guy who takes care of my entire life because of the bullshit that was supposedly done by me that wasn't done. Our youngest daughter is 21 years old. If what was done that was said about me or I did what was said, would my ex-husband be taking care of me with our youngest daughter being 21? He'd be like, on your own, bitch. Like, go on, like you fucked me over so bad, you hit me, you did whatever to me, I'm not taking care of you, you are on your own. But because none of that happened, and because it was just a bunch of attorneys that wanted to see their day in court, which by the way, our divorce cost us $2 million. And guess what? I had to pay $1 million of that, and it was their divorce. And I know that my ex is going through a period in his life where he feels terrible about the situation or hence he would not be helping me out because I need the help because of the shit, that 10% of lies that were told about me that didn't help me in any way. If in anything, it hurt me. It hurt my career. It hurt with people, with guys that potentially want to date with me. They look me up on Google and they go, oh my God, this girl tried to beat up a six foot eight, 255 pound, 99 mile an hour fastball thrower. Hell no, she has got to be crazy loose up here. No way. Yeah, that's true. It happens. Guys, you, and come up, they want my number, they want to date me, and then they go home and they Google me. And they go, oh God. And the reason why I'm bringing this up now is because I got so much love from you guys on Monday and Tuesday, on Friday and Saturday, that one guy that I mentioned the other day said to me, oh, how can you say all this when you stepped on Chuck Finley's foot and you broke his toe or something like that? Which isn't even what the, the, the allegations were. Allegations were that I hit him or something. The guy is six foot eight. I'd come up to his waist. If I were to hit, he's built like a shit brick house. If I were to hit him, the only thing that would hurt would be my hand. So that was a bunch of BS and I know that he feels terrible about this. I know he does because like I said, our youngest is 21 and he is still paying for my life and, the, and will be for the rest of my, my life because it hurt my reputation. So am I happy about 100% of my life and, and having it out there in the public, A, or even having it not out in the public and just having our friends think that this was true. The good news is, is the people that know me know that it's not true, but you don't know me, so you don't know. You just read what you read and you think what you think and you think, ah, she must be a little cuckoo to do something like that. Not true, because if it was, like I said, I wouldn't be living like I'm living. He would have said a long time ago, baby, you're on your own, but he's not and he never will because that's what kind of guy he is, and that's what kind of wife I was, and that's what kind of ex-wife I am. Whenever I hear a man say, my wife's a total bitch, I always think, what did she do to him? Because my ex-husband is so good to me because I treat him like a king. So if you take anything away from this, A, 
Don't have to accept everything that you've ever gone through if it doesn't help anybody, especially yourself. B, if you're divorced, be nice to your spouse, your ex person, because even if there's kids involved or there's not, you've loved him at one time or another. And, and C, be kind to yourself. And depression ain't a bad thing. And don't be embarrassed to tell anybody about it. Be embarrassed if you don't get help, because that's when you really, really turn on yourself. Trust me, I know. So what did we learn? We learned a lot today. We also learned that it's 10 minutes and 35 seconds, and I got to get the hell out of here because I ain't going to edit this. So I will see you tomorrow, and maybe tomorrow we will talk about nice, pleasant, and good times. Namaste. Wasn't that just perfect timing for my alarm to go off? Man, oh man.